So guys, I'm back with another video here. There's been a lot of talk being uh, made about the New England Patriots in their in their intense, to say the least, uh, free agency moves that they have made in the past few days. They've added a lot of talent, and they kind of made some splashy, splashy uh, trades and signings, which is uncharacteristic of the New England Patriots. And I'm here to provide. Um, a take, I guess you would say, on what this means for the Patriots and Bill Belichick. Now, the obvious thing is a lot of people are saying, uh, with these moves, the Patriots are setting themselves up for another Super Bowl run. They look even more dangerous than usual. And while I say that is possibly, probably, most likely true, what this also signifies is that Bill Belichick and the Patriots office, and maybe to some extent Tom Brady, to some extent, Tom Brady, but maybe not so much because he wants to play the 50. They all know that Tom Brady, Tom Brady's playing window, his playing time window, is closing. He's going to be 40 years old. It's funny because I almost sound like Max Kellerman right now from First Take. Please don't make me sound like Max Kellerman or anybody from First Take. I just want to <laughs> give my opinion on some things right now. But, so... What we know is that when quarterbacks hit 40 and beyond, they start to uh, they start to kind of fall down. They start to go down a cliff. Um, you know, with some exception, you know, Brett Favre added a little bit more, a little bit more umph in his his latter years. But the interesting thing is, they're making these moves to set up for a last push, meaning that they're getting Stephon Gilmore. They got Cody. Coney Ely, they they let Michael Bennett go, but they brought in Dwayne Allen to give Tom Brady that weapon. They brought in Brandon Cooks to give Tom Brady a deep weapon. And they're doing this, and all these deals aren't like long-term deals. They're not team-friendly deals. These are like, they paid big money to Stephon Gilmore. They took on Brandon Cooks' contract. They're, and it won't last long. It's not like a long-term deal. Like I said, Brandon Cooks' contract is like set to go up next year or something like that. Because they're giving Tom Brady all the weapons he needs to push for another Super Bowl. The urgency is there. They usually don't show that much urgency to build up a good team. They're usually content to let guys walk away. They let Jamie Collins go from, um, was it in the middle of last year or the year before that? They didn't pay Darrell Rivas again after the 2014 season. They... They let, uh, I can't remember all their names right now, uh, some of the guys in the past that they, they have allowed to leave because they didn't want to pay them the extra money because the guys wanted a little bit more. And they let them go because their idea is that we have a certain philosophy about how we spend money, about our cap space, about what guys want on our team and how we can build an overall better team. But now they are breaking the bank. That contract to Stephon Gilmore is not characteristic of a Patriots uh, salary cap move. They lost Logan Ryan, so they could have just went and got another cornerback who fit the Logan Ryan role, but no, they went out and got a good cornerback from the Buffalo Bills and paid him the type of money he was expecting to make. And they went and got Brandon Cooks. They haven't had like that that type of receiver in a while. Albeit he's still short <laughs> like the typical uh, Patriots receivers, um, but he's a burner and can get down the field. And like I said, what I'm, what I'm saying, this builds all up to me saying this. They're building up a really, really good team around Tom Brady to make one last push for a Super Bowl. Now, I'm not saying that one last push means that this is the last year for Tom Brady. But whatever they can get out of these moves, and what I mean whatever they can get, I mean Super Bowls or deep playoff runs, they want to get it now because they're not sure how long Tom Brady will play. That's my take on this. And the reason why I say this opinion is because you don't make these type of moves without some type of expectation for success and, you know, and a lack of success that follows. I think they're, they're willing to allow Tom Brady to try to play for as long as he wants to, but they know for a fact that the older that he gets, less likely that his play, his level of play, will be sustained from his earlier years. So they're saying if we can, 
he can continue to play at the level that he is right now, even for just one or two more years, we can possibly get one or two more Super Bowls before his play just starts to dramatically decline because he's too old. And I think that's untrue. I think that's exactly what these messages are sending uh, to the NFL right now. The Patriots are saying, we're going to push hard for these last couple of years for some Super Bowls because we know Tom Brady's time is almost up. And Bill Belichick knows that. And that's why I think they've been a bit more aggressive in this free agency. Let me just detail some of the guys that they faced. So, first of all, they lost Mike, but Martellus Bennett, the tight end. He signed with the Packers. They lost Logan Ryan, the cornerback. He signed with the Titans. They lost Barkevius Mingo. He signed with the Colts. They lost Javal Sheard. He signed with the Colts. And they released Sebastian Vollmer because they didn't want to pay his contract. But then they added by trade Coney Ely. If you remember Coney Ely, I believe he had three sacks against uh, Peyton Manning in the Super Bowl from two years ago. And he, he's been a disruptive force over the last couple of years. He's been building up his case. He's become a good pass rusher. And they said, let's add a dynamic pass rusher. They haven't had one in a while. So see what I'm saying? They went out and got a, a dynamic pass rusher to wreak more havoc, to make their defense even more respectable, to make them more disruptive. Then they got Brandon Cooks. They traded for Brandon Cooks from the Saints. And, you know, and gave up some pretty good draft picks there. They, they, they're mortgaging their future here. That's what I mean by they're, they're, they're setting up for the short term. They usually don't do this. They're mortgaging their future for a short-term run. And got Brandon Cooks from the Saints to give Tom Brady another dynamic weapon at the receiver position. Then they traded for Dwayne Allen, the tight end out of the coach who's been making some great plays. To replace Martellus Bennett, because Martellus Bennett was such a uh, integral part of their offense this past year. <clears throat> and not only that, they've re-signed these guys, Michael Williams, the tight end, to provide depth for the team. And they re-signed Deron Harmon, the DB, to give some depth in the secondary, behind Stephon Gilmore and Malcolm Butler. <clears throat> and that's um, so Malcolm Butler still on. And Allen Branch. And this is not official yet, but they want to get him resigned so they can have some depth on the D line. And they kept James Devlin the fullback because he's been an integral part of their system. And then the big ones from free agency that they just signed: Stephon Gilmore with that huge contract, and Lawrence Guy from the Ravens. And like I said, they lost some defensive guys, they lost tight ends, and then they re-signed some guys and went and signed some guys to fill those positions with even more talented guys. And like I was saying, all of that is like uncharacteristic Patriots behavior because they're going for this last push. Now, will this work out? That is an interesting, interesting, interesting question that you need the future, uh, if you, only the future knows. Because if you remember, a few years ago, the Philadelphia Eagles went out and signed the best free agency class ever, and that team flopped. And set that franchise back. Now the thing is, when the Patriots are making decisions like this, you you trust their judgment a little bit more. They have a great organization. They usually do a great job evaluating players. They know when they're overpaying or not overpaying. So you can probably trust the Patriots are making good decisions here. But the precedent hasn't been uh, good for those who went out and balled out in free agency. So it'll be interesting to see how this works out. Will all these players actually get good team chemistry and come together and and be instilled by the Patriots way? You know what I mean? Will they buy into the Patriots way of doing things? Um, will they learn the system well enough? Will they be able to play with one another well? All these things are integral to the success of a team. And if they can do that, then this could very well lead to another Super Bowl or two for Tom Brady before his play starts to decline. So, all we can do is wait and see. So that's interesting. This is what I've been thinking about for the Patriots and their free agency halls that they've just been racking in. So thanks for paying attention. What do you guys think about the Patriots? Like, what do you think, or should I say, give me your prediction. Will this lead to the success of the Patriots, or will they regret this in the next two years? Leave it in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Thanks for paying attention the whole time, guys.